Welcome back viewers. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, for those who are new to the channel, uh, my name is Tawea Patrick Matope and uh, on this channel I do deliver content on social work as well as social care related field. Um, because this is the field that I know and this is what I've been doing for the past 18 years. And uh, for those who are returning, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that uh, you'll be the first person to know uh, whenever I post a video. Uh, in today's video, I'm just going to talk to you about uh, the 12 things that I think um, somebody would need to focus, or focus on or do uh, for you to be an effective support worker uh, in a supported um, living uh, accommodation um, workplace or work setting really. So this will be focused mainly for those who are supporting young persons uh, in a supported uh, living accommodation uh, specifically. And I'm hoping that these 12 points will actually help you refocus on what you need to be doing uh, to make sure that you are an effective uh, support worker in a supported living uh, accommodation establishment or provision. Uh, first and foremost, uh, before I jump into point number one, um, I just need to emphasize and to stress or put a disclaimer that I don't consider myself a guru in the social care field, but I do share on this channel nuggets or a few uh, pointers uh, according to my own experiences or according to my own interaction with people in the field, really. Uh, so bear in mind that the things that I'm going to be talking to you about or the list I'm going to be giving you today, uh, these 12 pointers are not going to be exhaustive of all the things expected of you as a support worker in a supported living accommodation setting, but it will give you a pointer or it will give you a guide, a guideline or a direction as to what exactly you need to be doing or what you need to be focusing on uh, to be an effective uh, and robust support worker in a supported living uh, accommodation. Um, first and foremost, um, the first point I'm going to be talking about is, remember, uh, these young people are coming into a supported living accommodation or supported living setting for a reason. It's because they need support um, to be in that particular place. There could be unaccompanied young people who are seeking asylum, or it could be young people presenting with different uh, diagnoses. could be ASD or double diagnosis of ASD, ADHD, or whatever it is uh, that they are presenting with, or other significant health concerns which is impacting on their ability to offer themselves personal care or to offer themselves uh, support, personal support really. So point number one is making sure that you give them personal support. What do I mean by this? I mean uh, it's important for you as a support worker to make sure that you develop and sustain warm relationships with these young people that you are supporting, um, ensuring that you are promoting uh, their self-esteem, you are promoting their happiness, you are promoting their emotional health, things that you and I would yearn to actually enjoy in our everyday lives. So point number one, personal support. You need to make sure that you are offering personal support to the young people that you are supporting in a supported living accommodation. Um, point number two, you need to be making sure that you are assisting them with daily living activities or what we would call activities of daily living. Um, AODL, that's in, in abbreviation or in shortcut. Um, so in terms of assisting them with activities of daily living, what do I mean by this? As a support worker, remember, one of your primary responsibilities or roles is to make sure that you are helping these individuals manage their daily tasks without compromising their dignity and without compromising their autonomy and their sense of belonging, really. So you need to be ensuring that things like uh, their attendance to college, you know, their, you know, their, their personal, you know, personal hygiene is, is actually met. You are there to give them reminders and prompt, you know, prompters, really. Um, and uh, I understand there will be some who may not necessarily be able to execute all these activities of daily living. That's your role. That's why you are being employed as a support worker to support them, you know, and assist them with activities of daily living. Remember, um, in as much as you would be inculcating in them uh, a sense of responsibility of making sure that they are responsible for their surroundings, it is your overall responsibility to make sure that 
you have got responsibility over housekeeping chores, including cleaning, tidying up their laundry, meal preparation, dressing assistance, and maintaining the outdoor spaces. Ultimately, that responsibility falls on you in as much as you are there to support them, to make sure that they learn so that, you know, when they are living independently, they will be able to do these things. But ultimately, it's your responsibility to make sure that when the company is being paid or when, they, when your agency is being paid to take care of these young people, you are ensuring that the living environment is as clean as it can be and they're actually supported with all the activities of daily living. So that's point number two, very important. Point number three, as a support worker, your, your primary responsibility also is to ensure that their safety and well-being is maintained at all times. Their safety and well-being is maintained at all times. You need to ensure that um, you are maintaining their safety and well-being by creating a homely and nurturing environment. Because remember, the ultimate goal is to make sure that they, they, they acquire as much independent skills as possible to enable them to be living on their own if that is going to be the outcome for that particular uh, care plan for, the, for, that, for that young person, really. Uh, so this involves keeping them safe uh, while supporting their independence, uh, and also ensuring that they are fully prepared for adulthood. So that's really, really important. And where you've got concerns around them using substances or concerns around them going missing, you need to be putting in an appropriate support plan to make sure that they are supported according to the risks or the concerns that they are presenting with. All right, so moving on to point number four, uh, which is the bedrock of your role as a support worker is support planning. Support planning is where you collaborate um, with these young people to create what I would call personalized support plan. Each and every resident or each and every young person that you're supporting needs to have a personalized support plan. With this personalized support plan, it gives you breakdown of tasks that needs to be done on a daily basis. And on the breakdown of this task that needs to be done on a daily basis, your recordings also needs to be reflecting the work that is being done with that particular young person in a supported living accommodation. These daily recordings, remember, are the same daily recordings that are going to be translated into your monthly recordings and your quarterly recordings, which are going to be sent to the placing authority at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the day. So these plans, these support plans, um, it's, they need to basically set out what it is. Uh, it need, they need to, to give an outline of the goals for that particular young person. What is it that you are uh, striving to, to achieve? Or what is it that you are striving to, uh, to accomplish with that particular young person? And um, it also needs to clearly break down the strategies or the steps that you're going to be taking to make sure that that young person achieves independence at the end of the day. So if the young person, for example, is struggling with college attendance, it needs to break down activities that you as a support worker or you and your colleagues as support workers, because obviously I know that you'll be picking up shifts and others will be also picking up day shifts, others night shifts and all that. So it needs to break down what is it, the activities that you uh, as a support worker is going to be doing on a daily basis to support that young person to make sure that their attendance improves. This needs to be in collaboration either with the college uh, or any other professional involved in their lives, including their PA or sometimes their social worker. Remember, if they are struggling with the activities of daily living, if, if they are struggling with, uh, for example, college attendance, a simple thing like, you know, setting up the alarm or a simple thing like waking them up in the morning to make sure that they take the shower and they leave on time and, um, you know, they, they, they actually go to college is something which you need to also consider. Remember, some of these young people, they do come into care um, after they've gone through quite a traumatic experience. So your support plan should also capture or should also link up to the support which they need to be accessing to make sure that their emotional well-being is also uh, you know, kept in check. Then moving on to point number five, medication management. If the young person that you are supporting in a supported living accommodation is taking regular medication, this needs to be kept in check and you need to make sure that they are taking their medication, you administer the medication, you are recording it on the MA chart, MA is in MAR chart, and making sure that uh, you are maintaining accurate records of the medication which has been given. Remember to count the medication to make sure that, you know, it's not being abused and make sure that everything is in check. 
and remember medication would need to be kept in the medication cabinet if it is there uh, if it is that medication that doesn't need to be put in the fridge then it needs to be kept under lock and key as a health and safety measure then point number six is around emotional support this is linked to the other point number four which i gave earlier on around um which i spoke about support planning so with regards to emotional support remember it's your role to make sure that you provide emotional support to these young people during you know times uh where you know they find the going getting tough or you know things are quite a bit challenging for them um, if you feel that the emotional support or the mental health support which they need is out is beyond your remit, then you need to be linking them up with the appropriate support services. For example, CAMS or any other support agencies which are local to the area where you are working. So really, really important. And remember, an emotional support it doesn't only you don't only talk about emotional support or you know making sure that their mental well-being is 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 is, is kept in check, but also you need to make sure that you celebrate success with them. For example, if they've you know done well at college, you can even you know celebrate it with them. Uh, you know, give them encouraging words. Uh, celebrate you know significant achievements in their lives. For example, if they get a provisional driving license, or if they get a driving license, or they buy their first scooter, or they buy their first car, it's about you know celebrating those achievements and giving them some encouragement, which you know which will be a boost. Remember your accommodation setting would be home away from home for them basically then moving on to point number seven which is advocacy uh this is underscored by the fact that uh you as a support worker you are the voice of the voiceless uh you are the adult in charge in that particular place even though some of them might be above 18 you might argue say no they're adults on their own yes they might be adults on their own but they are there for a reason they still need your guidance so you need to be advocating for them in terms of their rights ensuring that they have got a voice in decisions which are being made which are affecting them and uh, if there's anything else that you think you need to be introducing games whatever it is that you think you need to be introducing uh you know it could be sports you know in you know make sure that you consult them and their voice or their views actually taking it into account and when they are trying to access some support from the local authority or from any other agencies within uh, your local area and they are struggling remember you are there to advocate on their behalf and to actually speak on their behalf sometimes and point number eight is making sure that their health care needs are being met that's non-negotiable that's not compromised. This is linked to the one uh, on medication, which I spoke about medication management, point number five. So in terms of health care coordination, you need to make sure that when they've got health appointments, these health appointments are kept and they're actually you know, honored and they do attend their health appointments by making sure that once the young person is admitted into your accommodation setting, placement planning meeting is held. Uh, they're registered with the GP, they're registered with um, optician, they're registered with the dentist, and they've got you know appointments for any specific health issue which might arise really so you need to be making sure that you assist them with uh even including health visits to the gp uh, or any other related tasks you know which uh, you know empowers them or which also ensures that their health care uh, is well coordinated then moving on to point number 9 crisis management remember um you may have more than two young people in your setting or you may have three, four, five, sometimes six, depending with how big your setting is. Remember, there is an issue where sometimes egos do clash with these young people and you end up being um, managing crisis in that setting. So you need to make sure that you remain calm in the way you handle the crisis. You 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 remain you know as effective as you can following the established protocols in terms of how you manage crisis uh, <coughs> in that setting sorry so crisis management is also one of the key skills i will post another video around crisis management really on terms of how you can manage residents who have got difficult or challenging behaviors there will be another video which will be coming so look out for that video again then point number 10 documentation we spoke about record keeping earlier on making sure that you keep accurate records is one of the major major you know roles that you'll be doing as a support worker making sure that the records of interaction with the young people you need to be evidencing the work that you are doing with young people to make sure that you are progressing those care plans you are progressing um that, that pathway plan which they come with 
any incidents or any progress which the um which you, you can you can think of they need to be taken note on the file to make sure that if something else crops up tomorrow you can always refer to the file and say this incident happened this is what i've done if you feel it's an incident which needs to be notifiable you need to liaise with management you need to be making sure that you're making sure that you're liaising with management and then point number 11 is around communication communication is really key remember you need to regularly communicate with the young people to make sure that they are kept abreast on what's going on they are kept informed or even on current information current news and all that there's nothing wrong you know with you discussing issues which are going on uh so that they they were also kept abreast on what's going on even uh in terms of the the the, the accommodation setting itself and uh, also you know communicating with them any other things that other professionals are also relaying to you uh, as their support worker really then point number 12 which is which is um also one of the most most important uh, points uh which i'm going to be delivering today is around continuous learning remember it doesn't necessarily mean that because you got a job as a support worker your learning ends there you need to continuously be learning you need to continuously be educating yourself involve yourself in webinars involve yourself in workshops there are many free workshops that you can access on eventbrite uh on facebook or in, in many platforms really that you can you know uh, uh you know actually uh, access some some free training for that matter doesn't necessarily mean you need to pay money there are many free trainings that you can access to equip yourself with the necessary skills for you to be able to be an effective uh support worker remember it's your learning journey i always tell people that when you are working you know when you get a job it's your learning journey it doesn't necessarily mean that you stop learning because you've got a job everything else is wonky dory you are fine to go it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be making sure that you are continuously learning stay informed of best practices attending training sessions and adapting to any changing needs within the field um remember um you know you need to be somebody who is able to demonstrate empathy patience good commitment to improving the lives of those people that you are supporting so that's really really important and remember there is a document um for those who are working in england called the guide to supported accommodation regulations for england that's your go-to guide for anything to do with supported living accommodation if you want to learn anything on how to you know manage the situation on in, in even your role as a support worker as well so uh with those few words thank you so much and i hope you have uh, grasped uh, a few points uh from today's video if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe share the video with others uh who are also in the same field so that they may also learn one or a few things that you've also learned yourself hit that uh, notification bell so that when i post you'll be the first person to know and then you can actually watch and share with others thank you so much for watching